All right, everyone, let's go on. We've been talking about uh, the value of blogging, and we're going to talk about uh, WordPress.com, using it, setting it up and such. Um, we're also going to talk about blogging, brainstorming ideas and such. Before we do any of that, I want to compare and contrast um, the... Uh, the WordPress system and the Tumblr system. You often hear much more about WordPress than Tumblr, but I do teach one day on the last day about Tumblr. This is another kind of blog, although it is a much more newer generation. So let's take a look to contrast uh, with, with WordPress. Let's go to tumblr.com Tumblr. It's one of these modern hip websites that they forget a vowel or two. So Tumblr.com It has, it's, it's like a, it's, it has a character that is like a mixture of a website, a blog, a social network everyone's will probably look a little bit different. I see this here. What I want to do is... Um, do you see a button that says Get Started? Let me see, it might be different for different people, but uh, if you click on If you just scroll down, actually, if you scroll down a little bit, do you see uh, some bubbles right here? So just scroll down or click the bubble, the next bubble. I'm just trying to show you an overview. Okay, what is this thing? Uh, so the next one here, Tumblr is so easy to use that it's hard to explain. Uh, so it talks about setting this up to uh, be able to share content. Stories, photos, GIFs, TV shows, dumb jokes, smart jokes, videos, etc. Tumblr is 293 million different blogs filled with literally everything. Literally whatever. So nearly 300 million people using Tumblr. We're going to see that it, it feels like a social network. It feels like Twitter or maybe, or maybe a Facebook or Pinterest or, or something. But it's where you can share content. Next screen down here, Tumblr is blogs. Tumblr, it turns out that, that, that when you make it easy to create interesting things, that's exactly what people do. All those great things, random blogs your, your friends send you, those are Tumblr blogs. We'll s help you find and follow blogs like that. And we'll help other people find and follow yours. So, I'll make some notes here. The big difference... So this will be compare, contrast, WordPress, and Tumblr. I would call WordPress the uh, long-form blog, and Tumblr the short-form blog. The character of WordPress is that you're going to be writing 100 words, 500 words, Whatever, you're going to be writing more content, long form. Tumblr is going to be much more short form. You might write one short paragraph, a couple of sentences. Uh, WordPress is more traditional text driven, and Tumblr is more multimedia driven, meaning pictures, video, animation. It's not to say that you can't switch these two. You can. You can write 500 words on your Tumblr blogs, your Tum blogs. You can do that, sure. You can write short articles, really short one sentence long articles on WordPress and put in five animations. Fine. You can mix and match the two. But the character of each of these places, the people that hang out and read these things, are more like that long form, short form. I suppose in. In one way, you can also say more professional, 
more, what's the opposite of professional? Uh, unprofessional, more personal, more personal, casual, that's a good one, more casual. So again, not that you can't do one or the other on either one, it's just that the character has grown organically like this. You're going to see that very, very soon, if not already, here on Tumblr, that it's more personal, more casual, more unprofessional. But uh, big companies also have Tumblr, like you know, Rolling Stone is on this, New York Times is on this. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of companies use Tumblr as well, in addition to or instead of perhaps a traditional WordPress kind of blog. You're able to share all of this multimedia text, you can do photos, links, you can do chats, audio and video, and quotes to share content. You can share content also on WordPress, any kind of this content. Write an article and attach a video. Write a paragraph and also put a sound. Uh, you can do all of that on WordPress as well as Tumblr. Seriously, put anything you want here. Seven post types to get you started. Your brain can do the rest. This thing is yours. Use it however you like. So I can write, um, I've got Victor's Bakery, and I want to get more traffic to my website to sell cupcakes. So I'm going to use Tumblr as a place for me to write some short posts, or maybe share these photos of these cupcakes. Maybe make little animations of a cupcake spinning around. Maybe make a video where I say, look at our new cupcake, and then I show the camera. So I can use Tumblr or WordPress as a way to help me get those sales, to build a community to get traffic, whatever you're trying to do online, your online presence. I say that over and over in all of my classes. I'm going to teach you these things. It's up to you to apply them to your particular um, brand or company or whatever. I can show you the tools and the do's and the don'ts and the pitfalls and all of that, but what you do exactly for your success is the hard thing for me to teach to a whole room. That's why we have the lab time at the end of the day, maybe to talk one-on-one. -on -one. That's why I can help you one-on-one -on -one and such. But in general, I can talk about the overarching concepts, and then you have to apply them more directly. So how am I going to use that WordPress? How am I going to use Twitter? How am I going to use Tumblr? As you get used to these things, then, then it will uh, hopefully make more sense on your site. Um, so it tells you, great, it's not that hard to explain. Let's get started. We'll, we'll look at Tumblr later. But let's say at the very top, search. New York Times. I'm going to search for New York Times. If you get any, uh, if you get any results over here, you might get suggestions. You might get actual blogs. These are articles with that keyword, and here are actual blogs. These are actual, you know, businesses and such that have that. I see the New York Times Style Magazine. I see New York Times. New York Times Press. Nothing. So I see New York Times right there. The New York Times, just as an example, uh, that's not the official one, New York Times, I'm going to go with New York Times Style Magazine, just as an example. I'm going to choose some keyword and search for something and find an example of a Tumblr blog, a Tumblog. This is the New York Times, their style magazine. New York Times obviously is a real entity that has existed uh, like a hundred years at least, and they've got a Tumblr. The purpose of their Tumblr here is to show previews, snippets of their articles. They're showing these posts, heavy reliance on a picture, a little snippet of text, Let's say I really want to learn this. This spring, unleashing the style of seduction. Well, maybe not that one. Uh, maybe design over here. Marriage of tastes and two furniture designing artists. Okay, I want to see more. What that does is that guides me back to NewYorkTimes.com. If you noticed with Tumblr, like WordPress.com, the default will be you will get your name.tumblr.com. And so this is set up 
on their server, on their network, someone sees your posts, they click, and then it goes back to NewYorkTimes.com. It's still guided people back to their main website, where they can read the whole article. There was only a short snippet on Tumblr. The whole thing is here, maybe with more pictures, more content. You may say, well, what's the point of that? Why didn't I, why didn't I just uh, go look at... Um, why didn't I just go to the New York Times directly? Well, this again, is, the idea here is that you have different people browsing different places all over the internet. There's a lot of traffic that's on Tumblr. People create a Tumblr account, they stay there, they look at a lot of things there. They're going to look at that much more perhaps um, instead of your website. People are on these social networks all day long. You might as well also be there where, where the people are at. But then with, an, with a link to take them back to your site. So we could be using Tumblr as a way of getting the word out to your articles. So that's why you could write the whole thing on Tumblr, and that's fine. Or you can use it as a marketing tool to bring people back to your site. That's why I feel that, that Tumblr is like a mixture of a of a blog, of a social network. It's a mixture of all of these things. Depending on the design of it also, it has a different character, a different style. The design of this Tumblog is like this, that it kind of reminds me a bit of Pinterest. Let's say I'm going to look for some other company. Let's say, uh, let's see, the CNN have a Tumblr, CNN Center, cnnpolitics.tumblr.com. Bringing you the quirky, questionable, and quotable side of politics. So CNN is sharing stuff, pictures, and text. This was six hours ago. This was three days ago. So all of this content is being shared. And then if I want to further read on a particular topic, I click and then I go read the whole thing back on CNN.com. And so all of these um, All of these Tumblr blogs are also the same sort of concept. Create content to get found. People are on Tumblr, people can search. Your stuff is on Tumblr, people could find your stuff. Then that could link people back to your site where you can make the sale. Where you can have people read your article, where they can book a table, where they can hire you, where they can um, contact you for a free quote or whatever on your site. This is just another way to do it. We'll spend one day to get deeper into Tumblr later. This is something we'll be talking about and thinking about later as a possible online presence in addition to or instead of WordPress. Any questions on, on Tumblr at this point? We are going to focus on WordPress for the first three days and then we'll talk about Tumblr on the fourth day. What we're going to do is create a WordPress.com account, navigate a little bit about what it what it what we have once we create a WordPress, then we'll take the time to do an activity where we do blog brainstorming. And then we'll probably get to the end of the day at that point. So I'm going to go back to WordPress.com. Go to WordPress.com. And we'll click the button to create a website.
we're going to go through a few steps to create a WordPress site. We've got step one. Uh, what's your, what your site going to be about? So you want to select something here that makes sense. This can be changed later. Let's say I am, uh, again, my fictional business, Victor's Bakery. Uh, I want to create a company WordPress site. So business and service might work best for me, probably for most of you. So choose whatever makes sense for you. I will select business and service. And it'll have more options. Okay, communications, finance, etc. Do I see anything regarding food? I see restaurant. I see restaurant and locales. General business, if none of these quite makes sense. In my case, I will select restaurant or locale. The great thing about WordPress is that we're able to choose a design to our site and then change it relatively easily in the future. In classic web design, Dreamweaver or HTML method, if I chose a, th a design, if I made a design, and then I wanted to update my design a couple years later, it would be a big hassle, just the nature of it. But a modern website building tool like WordPress or Squarespace and such give us the ability to easily change designs. And WordPress calls it a theme. So here it's saying, what kind of theme, what kind of design would you like? And there's not a lot to choose from, perhaps, on this screen, but on another screen we'll see there's many more to choose from. So for the moment you can select at the bottom to skip and it'll give you a random design or you can choose a design, and mine that show up here might not be the same as yours, but if you see 2016, pick it. If you see something else, you can pick it, that's fine. But if you choose a different design, like Hemingway rewritten, your design or your interface might look a little different than mine. And that's not a big deal. But if you see the 2016 theme, go ahead and pick it. Step three, we're going to set up a domain, your own piece of the internet. But because we're going to use the free version of WordPress, we will get the WordPress.com branded to our site. We can choose to not have WordPress.com, but notice it says starting at $18 a year. That's not incredibly expensive, but other things that WordPress.com sells are, are more expensive. I don't recommend to get their, their service that you pay for. We'll have a day later where we talk about a real hosting provider like Bluehost or GoDaddy, HostMonster, etc. We'll talk about that later. For the moment, for this class, we'll just go with the free one, which means they'll put their name on your site. And so here, let's say I'm creating a website called Victor's Bakery. So I'm going to use the, the word Victor's Bakery, and it's going to suggest to me victorsbakery.wordpress.com. That's the one you want. Don't worry about getting the other ones, like the $25 one or $18 one. If the name that you want is taken, it might give you other suggestions. And the whole point of what we're doing here is we're creating this WordPress account, and you can decide if you're doing this for real or just to learn this. If this is just a fake account to learn this, to test it out, we can delete it, no problem. But if you're creating this account because you really want a website and start to blog and all of that, you can do so. You'll have to do the extra step of eventually transferring this over to your real provider later. So I recommend sort of setting this up as a testing fake account. You can put whatever name you want here. We'll delete it later. I'm selecting the free one. Then it's saying step four, pick a plan. We've got the free one, it's free for life. We won't shut it down. Then we've got premium, 825 per month. 
in the back business. Question? It may have more or less, but it should yeah, but the first division of one way you would say what you would make for time to do you do the different space of the money off of the thing and then make it in the tower. Okay, I think we'll be fine here. Mike is gonna show up to that screen in just a moment. And here it might say then about choosing the different service levels. I could do eight twenty-five per month, or I could do twenty-four ninety-nine per month. And what's the what's what do they include? You can click compare plans, and it'll tell you. Don't bother with this. What they sell here is nice, but I think it's way too overpriced. Um, like the. Uh, the business one, $24.92 a month for 12 months, comes out to $300 per year. For $300 over at GoDaddy, you can get like five years of service. Mm -hmm. This is one year for $399. Uh, I don't recommend really any of these paid ones. Uh, they have uh, too many drawbacks, like I was saying here at the dot com. It's uh, uh, you can't use the plugins. You don't get the unique name unless you pay. It's still got too many, too many drawbacks. So we're going to use the free one. And then on the last step, it'll say create the account. We need some email, username, password. Probably the web address that you chose would be good for the username. You can make it something else if you'd like, but you'll have to remember two different things. So I'm using the same web address as my username. Um, email address. Again, if you're doing this for fake, you can put a fake email address here. My real fake address at hotmail.com. Sure. But if this is a real address, a real website that you want to build on WordPress.com, you can put a real address here. Uh, this is to verify your account. If you don't verify your account, you'll have some limitations. If you do verify it, you'll get more features. Uh, but for learning this for the class, I'm just putting a fake address. doesn't matter too much. And then create a password. There are terms of service. They call the fascinating terms of service. You can read that at some point if you'd like, or just click create. And that's basically saying, well, it's your content, you own it, but you're using our services. So if your website's all about, you know, uh, harassment or hate speech or violence and weapons or whatever, it might go against the uh, it might go against the terms of service. The site could get shut down. That sort of thing. So if you have a legitimate kind of business, you should be okay. I will click Create Account. Then eventually it should go past these items. Is anyone having any trouble getting to this point? Depending on the on various factors, your screen might look a little different. But if it does, let me know. And question? Free trial. Uh, well, you should get the pre. Uh, you should get the free one. Let's see. Just, uh, just a normal rant. Um, 
of the screen here. I'll, I'll change to the screen in just a moment. So on mine, it took me to this quick screen that says, Welcome to WordPress. Yours may show that or not. But if I kind of just go through this quickly, in my case, it took me straight to my home page. If it didn't take you there, that's okay, because I want to go uh, back to the dashboard. So if it took you to your home page, click on My Site, and you'll see all of these, all of these settings. You may see these settings in a different way. But basically with WordPress, we've got your site and we've got the settings of the site. We've got these different buttons at the top. You may see my site, you may see reader. At the top right, you may see a little bell for notifications, your account, and to write. Does everyone see on the top right corner a little person? Your account icon, if you click that, here's various options, sign out, edit the account, profile, and all of those things. On the top left, you may see My Site, and then you may see Reader next to that. Now, WordPress.com, to a large degree, is training wheels. It's a way for you to create a site, write blogs, and, uh, and, and get your feet wet. But it's not the full featured, full power of having a WordPress.org, a self-hosted site. And what we have to get used to with either the .com or the .org is that we have two aspects of WordPress. We have aspects of WordPress. We have the dashboard. And we have front end. Dashboard sometimes I'll, I'll call it the back end. There's back end, front end. Sometimes I'll, I'll call uh, the front end visit site. The dashboard, the back end, is where you go change your settings, manage your content. It's the administrator's screen. The front end is what the visitors see. So, admin screen. Uh, visitors screen. We need to jump back. We need to know how to jump back and forth between the two because we might need to edit things in the back end and see what they look like in the front end. So every WordPress site has the same login screen. It's going to be something dot wordpress dot com slash wp dash admin whatever your wordpress address is slash wp admin this is the example for hosted and then if I had a self hosted it would be like pictures bakery dot com slash WP dash admin. So every WordPress has this, either on .com or .org. Your your admin screen, your login screen to get to the dashboard. Yes. So hosted. This is all still just WordPress.com, not .org. Self-hosted is is .org. .org. 
so if you've got a .org kind of website, a self-hosted, it's going to be in this style. It is the name of your website and then slash wp-admin. So I'm telling us this so that wherever we are in our process here, so that we're all looking at the same thing, let's go to the dashboard of your hosted WordPress site. Mine is telling me I'm at word I'm at Victor's Bakery Weblog dot WordPress dot com. So I would type the address slash wp dash admin. There is a way to get to that. There's a button somewhere for somewhere here. They move it all the time. I forget where it is, but I know that this is the way to always get back there. Let's give that a try. Whatever the address is of your site, at the end, let's see about adding slash wp-admin and that should take you to some screen that says dashboard. Let's confirm that we're all here. Is anyone having any trouble? We want to get here to the dashboard. Put your address slash wp-admin. If it worked, it should say welcome to WordPress and it should say dashboard at the left. Did everyone get that? So we've got uh, the dashboard here. We've got this way to get back to this administrator screen. Only you will see this on your site. And if I want to see what do the people see that read my, my site, if you click on uh, my site at the top, Um, well, it, the, it's just the difference between the address. If you, if you just have the address as the name of your site like that, then it'll show your site. That's what your site looks like to people. But then when you've got the WP admin at the end, this is your dashboard. So we just need to get used to being either in the back end or the front end. This is the back end, the dashboard, the admin screen. And then this is the front end. This is, the, this is what people see. We're going to look at a few. We're going to look at a few um, settings and screens that I would think are are valuable for you regarding blogging. Let's uh, on the left side. You'll see settings. If you hover over settings, then you can select general. So hover over settings and select general settings. We have site title and tagline. It put the name of my site, which I wrote a little while ago. It put it there. And that shows up when someone visits my site. Somewhere in the site it'll say that. Victor's Bakery Weblog. I don't like that. I don't like that it's not capitalized with spaces so it's giving you the chance here to change it to whatever you want 
So if it's not exactly what you want, I would change it to actually say something like Victor's Bakery. This is a site title that will appear on, on, the, on the front end, but also it'll appear on the title in the tab of the web browser. Or if someone is searching, that will also appear when people search. So you do want to edit that title so that it's something meaningful and, and readable. And as we'll talk in detail throughout the course and the SEO class, remember I mentioned keywords. You want to think of these keywords that people are searching for. We could still use those keywords either in the site title or the tagline because this will be something that appears on screen. So tagline, for example, in a few words explain what the site is about. I would write a real sentence here, not just words, not just keywords. I would write a sentence, such as San Diego Bakery, specializing in um, healthy alternatives. I'm going to write something, some sentence. People could be searching for this. Healthy cookie alternatives. Some of these keywords that people could search for, I put them throughout my site and that helps me get found. So the secret to SEO is to create content that people might search for. I would not write a huge amount of text here. I would try to see if I can write what I can, what is meaningful, within the box here before I go too further out over here because it's at a certain point it'll get cut off anyway on a Google search or Bing or whatever. So if you try to fit within that box, that's that's a good goal. Question? Yes, um, so the site title, it is different from your actual address? It is. The address is going to be victorsbakeryweblog.wordpress.com. That can be changed elsewhere. The site title is just what is going to appear on the top of my website here in the design and what is going to appear on the tab and what is going to appear when someone does a search and I come up. They can be different. I've got Victor's Bakery here and I've got Victor's Bakery web blog up there. I should set my time zone properly so that when I write something it says I wrote it at 3 p.m instead of 6 a.m. So this is UTC 0. Where in the world is UTC 0? This is London. London time. We can set our UTC offset. No one knows that. So instead we will select Los Angeles. If you click on the box and start typing LOS, it'll jump you to the section of Los Angeles. There's a lot of cities to choose from. So click the box, type LOS, and it should jump you to Los Angeles. If you'd like to change your date format, you can. If you'd like to change your time format, you can. When does your week start, and what is the language that your, that your blog is written in, your site? I'm going to leave it as English. If you'd like to change the interface so that the buttons are in a different language, you can follow that link. If you've got a picture or a logo of your business on the top right corner, you can select your, pic your, your blog's picture. And that's just a little bit of branding. So instead of you having the generic little person icon there, you have a logo. When you make changes, make sure you click Save Changes. Any questions on this screen? Let's jump down to Settings on the left side, Reading.
under reading here, later on this front page displays will make sense. Uh, but this is a way for you to change the design of your site. Let me show you here. If I go back to my blog, this one has the setting that we have here on default, your latest post. And if I look at this other client that we have, they've also got a um, they've also got a um, they've also got a WordPress site that we built for them. Not these guys. That's the competition. Uh, this one. Um, this is also a WordPress site. This kind of site is what would be called here the static site. It's static in that the front page doesn't change too much. Yes, there's a slideshow, but that doesn't count. Compare the classic blog site. Whenever a new article is written, it pushes the old one down. So the February, the February one pushes down the November one, which pushes down the November 24th one. That's our default right here. Your latest posts will show up on the front page. You might want a design like these guys that the new articles and such are not visible on the front page, nothing pushes down the, the stuff, it's static. The slideshow stuff we'll talk about later. But here, the most important stuff stays on the front page. It's static. This restaurant, most restaurants, the most important thing you want to show on the front page, your address, phone number, hours of operation. I don't want that to change. So it might be a good idea, depending on my business, to set a static page. We can't do it yet. We cannot do it yet, however, because we would need to select here. What is your front page placeholder? And I don't have a home page placeholder. And it says, where would you like to then put your blog posts? What's the placeholder to put your blog posts? I have no blog placeholder. So we can't do this yet. But people always ask, how do I change my site to be static? Or people would say, I didn't know you could make a regular website on WordPress. I thought it could only be a blog. Well, that's what the default is. If you want to make a classic kind of static home page, you have a way to do it, which we'll do later. I will say here, three styles of WordPress blogs, of WordPress sites. We have classic blog, we have static site, and in the middle I would call hybrid. It's got something of the two. That's what Texcoco is. So my own classic, my own blog, vmcompass.com slash blog, that's the classic one. The static site is this other client, italianissimotrattoria.com. That's the static one. And in the middle, is a key as Texcoco. They have stuff that's static that doesn't change very much on the home page, but if you notice in the corner, they have the blog, and the latest blog shows up there. So that's hybrid. In the screen that we're looking at here, we can choose between classic or static, and to create hybrid is a little more complex. It's going to depend on your theme and plugins and other things. The WordPress can make these three kinds of types of sites not just limited to the classic blog. In our case, we'll leave it alone, your latest posts. Other sorts of things here to mention briefly. Um, for each article in the feed show, I would su suggest put summary right here. If someone subscribes to your blog, they are going to get either the full article in their inbox or a summary. And I recommend the summary because then that will entice people if they really cared about it then they will click to go back to your site to read more, to maybe buy your product, to maybe do something else on your site. If you send them the whole article full text they have less of an incentive to go back to your website. 
I do recommend that. Send them a summary rather than the full text. If you can bring people to your site and keep people on your site longer, that's good. That will help you accomplish, will, will help them accomplish the goal you want for them. The goal of my comic website is just for people to read, or maybe to click the ads. The goal of Italianissimo's website is for you to call them to book a table. The goal of Texcoco is maybe order something. So the longer you keep someone on the site, the more apt or they may, the more prone they may be to do what, what you want them to accomplish. So one way to keep them longer on your site is here under Related Posts, Show Related Content. Once they've read one article, suggest to them, why not also read this one or that one? So I do recommend that one, Show Related Content. Show the header. And I recommend show a large and visual striking layout, meaning show a thumbnail, show a picture, because I'm sort of starting to ignore the things that look like an ad, like that, that looks like just text ad. People might ignore that. If instead you select the thumbnail, it will take the picture from your article and put it as part of the related post, and that might catch attention for someone to read more. They read one article, then they'll read another one, they read a few more, and then maybe ultimately they subscribe to you, they buy your product, they contact you, they do something. Besides that, all of these defaults are fine. If I didn't mention anything, it, it's just fine. But any questions on, it, on this page here, on this screen here? When you make changes, go ahead and save. Click Save at the bottom. And now we'll look at Discussion. Almost all of the settings that are here are fine, except for one of these right here. Um, you have to decide if you want to do this or not. Default article settings allow people to post comments on new articles. When you make a new blog post, by default someone will be able to comment. Uh, I recommend to let people comment. That's going to help your SEO. When people can comment, it shows the search engines that your site is active. The downside is if you leave that on, any crazy person can write any crazy thing on your site. So I say, I don't want crazy people to write on my site, so I turn it off. Again, then that goes against, then that's the problem that now that might not be good for your SEO. So in the middle, a medium would be leave this on, but then if you scroll down to see before a comment appears, comment must be manually approved. That's what I want. Let any crazy person write any crazy thing. It will not show up until I approve it. I'll get an email, and right from my inbox, it'll have a button. Approve, deny, spam. So if I take a quick look at their comment, it's on topic, it's good, it's not weird or profane or whatever, I click Approve, it shows up on the site. If it's not particularly, if it's, if it's a spam comment, just links to ads or whatever, I can just click Spam, and it'll go away, I'll never see it again. And perhaps someone wrote something not particularly nice, but it wasn't spam, but I don't really want to show that, show that up on my site because it's so negative, I can just deny it. It doesn't get sent to the spam because maybe they wrote other meaningful things, but that particular one was off topic, so I'll just deny it. So that's the big secret here. I would wish they would turn this on by default. That'll save a lot of spam uh, hassle, but I recommend turning it on. Question. It seems that mine keeps going back to the previous page. Um, Which previous settings? page? Reading settings. It keeps going back to that. I thought it could save changes. It should, because um, if you save them, it takes you back to the one reading settings. Now you want to switch over to the special. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And besides these settings, except before a comment appears, every other setting here is fine. 
Uh, WordPress is set up pretty well to allow discussion and all of that. It's just that I would highly recommend to turn on before a comment appears. Comment must be manually approved. Everything else is fine. I'm going to save that screen. And the last setting screen that we'll look at, very valuable, is under sharing. Let's go to settings and then sharing. Later on, I'll have for you a checklist of, of blogging. And one of the items in the checklist is to be able to let people share on social media. Notice this has got uh, the setup like this. It's, it's kind of a complex thing to look at. So let me explain it in general, and then we'll see what it means. Yes? Some of these settings might not pop up depending on the kind of site that was selected, unfortunately. But they won't. You do what you need to do if you're on the screen and to uh, your, uh, click on your address right there. And go ahead and cancel on this address here for the And if I go to UP branch admin. Okay, under sharing, we have these three sections. Question? Uh, yeah, I think I just did. I'm on the wrong. I, I didn't, I'm not on the admin page, is why I might get some of the things. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so what you do then is click on the name of your site right there. Okay. And then I'll let it go up here. And then at the end of the address, type the WP content So the, we have different networks like Facebook, Twitter, etc. And what it shows us here is these are the networks that we can attach to your to your posts in that when someone reads one of your articles um, then the person can easily share it to their networks so let me show you this example here this is a blog post comic-con bingo so there's an article here and then it's got the ability for people to then share on social media someone read this article they liked it they're gonna share it on their Twitter they're gonna share it on their Facebook on their Google Plus on Tumblr whatever they're gonna spread my post to their networks giving me free advertising that's the point of this this is saying how would you like people to share your stuff on their networks choose from all of these I choose them by dragging them from the top area to the middle area and then they will look like this right here. On every article, then it'll say share it on WordPress, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Google+. We have all of these to choose from. So let's say I also want people to be able to email this article to people. You click and drag the email button down here, and then you organize it however you want. So whenever there's an article, people will be then able to now email that article giving you more fame for your articles. We see well, that sounds great. Why don't I add them all? Sure, add them all. It's going to start to look cluttered. So that's why you've got this extra area here. Services drag here will be hidden behind a share button. If you put your services in that gray box, instead of all of these buttons being visible at once, they won't be visible until someone clicks that more button. So what if you put the top two or three most popular networks right away and then put all of these other possible networks hidden down on the side here. You know, maybe I never heard of Telegram, but someone has. Sure, I'll add it there. There's WhatsApp. There's Skype. So the way it'll look like is that someone's got 
that article that they read of yours, then it will say quickly share it on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and more if they'd like to. This is one aspect to help you get traffic. You can customize this a little bit. Would you like to show the icon and text? Or would you like to show the icon only, or the text only, or the official button? Whichever of these you like. I like the official button, but the problem with that one is if you have zero likes, it'll say zero. If that's zero shares, it'll say zero. So you'll see all of your articles with zero, zero, zero. And that might not look so good. You're not going to entice people to share when no one has shared. And the thing about social media is popularity breeds popularity. So no popularity breeds no popularity. If someone sees something that no one is paying attention to, they are going to be more prone to not pay attention either. But if someone sees this article has been shared seven times, well, people are onto something. Let me share it also. It's a group mentality. So if you have no shares on any of your content, you might not want to show that off yet. So you might want the, the regular icon or the second place. I also like the icon only. It'll just show you a little graphic of the, of the network and then they can share it to Facebook and it won't say that you've never shared it before. You can customize the text there such as, you know, share, why not? And then it'll say whatever you want there. Would you like people to, to share your posts and pages and pictures? The front page, search results, you can turn that on or off. The defaults are fine. If you have a Twitter account and someone shares your article on their Twitter, you can set it so that your Twitter account is automatically also shared. If you've got a Twitter account, let's say PMD Interactive, if someone shares this article, it'll send it and also attach my company's Twitter to the tweet. That could get you more traffic back to your account. And everything else looks good. I'll just save it. So we're not going to look at every single option here. These are some quick settings that we looked at. Uh, we're going to change shift gears for a moment. When we come back next time, we're actually going to write articles and such. But before we leave, we've got a little more to talk about. But any questions on any of the things we looked at here? If I didn't say anything about anything, it's OK to skip it for the moment. But anything, any questions on what we've looked at so far? The point of setting up WordPress is we'll have something ready so that we can start writing something meaningful next time. But then that is the big idea of what to write.